Okay. Hello guys, I just want to put this video up and share a little project I've been working on. It's called Rummy Tiles. Uh, before I get started, just a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Brandon Steinke. Um, I have a background in kind of corporate America, but after that I left and made a spent the next five years developing an indie video game called Project Zerv using the Unity engine. Um, just a little self-promotion here. It's available on Game Jolt. It's called Project Zerb. It's also on this YouTube channel and here's a little gif of the action you'll see when you play that game. Uh, it's a little 2D player retro style game but anyways back to what I'm sharing today. Um, so yeah I have a background in uh, indie game development and then I went to a data boot camp um, and learned a lot more about coding and data uh, data objects and data visualization and started learning how to pair so the video game that you saw just previously uh, was coded in JavaScript and Unity uh, so basically I learned more about JavaScript uh, in the boot camp subsequently took more JavaScript classes online and in that boot camp we also learned how to use HTML which is surprisingly easy and versatile and pretty fun to spool up a game so I'm like well maybe I can think about maybe I can put a game together just using JavaScript and HTML and that's what we have here um, so <clears throat> uh, basically uh, over the last uh, two and a half months I've been working on this the first month was just getting this UI to work where you can grab tiles and dynamically make groups and you can kind of move these groups around and then after that I went into basically finding out what creating an algorithm to determine what are all these groups on the board are these groups created um, correctly or are they wrong because uh, if the player makes an incorrect group well that's not a valid turn we gotta reject that and they gotta kinda lose their turn so I'll go ahead and put these back um, so basically Rummy Tiles is a game where you are to create sets of three or more uh, of consecutive tiles or uh, matching tiles of a kind. So I'll go ahead and um, go full screen, refresh the browser, get a new set of tiles, see if I can show you an example. Uh, yeah, it's sort of hard to get a good set right off the bat. Um, so anyways, I've been developing this game and uh, got the UI to work, then I got to understand what the objects were on the board, and then from that point I started developing the computer opponent, com uh, component of this game. And at this point I have the game where I can play against the computer and the computer can make basic groups. It can look at its own tiles and it can determine can it make a group of three or more and it looks at the other groups that are on the board and it says can I add to those groups can I add you know to the front of those groups to the back of those groups etc so we'll, I'll just go and run a little mock game for you right now uh, so I can't okay so I can make this group right now so this is three of a kind of three uh, this could be expanded one more to be a final three, a square three. So as long as these are uh, all the same number but are different symbols or different colors, it's a valid group. So once I've completed my turn, I hit the whole uh, complete turn button right here, which is really easy, and it shows that I just played this set of tiles up here in the purple bar. Up in the blue bar, per well, up in the upper bar, is basically uh, what the computer has just done. The computer has just pulled a tile and here in the green bar down below um, it's basically saying that the current player is me. Player, I am player one. So going forward looking at, well I could have played two, three, four instead of three, three, three. Now I'm not going to get in the minutia but when you first play this game and the first set you put down I think the rules in traditional rummy cube call for uh, all your tiles have to add up to 30. Uh, in the game that I'm setting up, I'm going to make it 15 because uh, I think 30 points is just punitive. Uh, it's hard enough just to make a set of 
tiles that equal 15, especially if you don't have them for two or three or 10 turns. So up here in the upper left-hand corner is my tile rack. Uh, it's present at all time right now. Um, Basically, you win the game when you put all the tiles on the board. The first player to empty out their tile rack and have no tiles left is the winner. And the loser receives the points of, um, or the winner gets the points from the loser's tile rack. And then if you want to play not how many games you won, but how, how many points you have after a certain amount of games, that's how you determine the, the final, final winner. If that makes sense. So I can't do anything, so I'm going to complete my turn. Uh, you hear that little chime right there. That's the computer saying I've played my turn. It's a little audio indicator that they're done playing, and I'm, I just added that. And it's made it so much easier for me to determine when the computer is done because the computer can play so quickly. If you blink, you'll just miss it. So go ahead and look at this. And I still can't play, so I'm going to go ahead and... Complete my turn, get another tile. Um, also can't play. Oh, just got a 12. Oh, computer is now going to play. It's first set. Three, four, five. That's a good group. I'm going to go ahead. I see these 12s in here. I'm going to put them on the board. And we're going to say, okay. Computer pulled the tile. Um, I just want to kind of break the game real quick and show you when I'm when you make an invalid group and you hit your complete your turn, it's going to look at that group and say that group's wrong. <laughs> and unfortunately, I don't have it set up where the computer cannot play in an incorrect group. It's kind of funny. <clears throat> So right now it says, this is how that group was when I hit my turn. It says, does not have at least three tiles. Okay, so this is a little feedback for the player. So if the player makes an incorrect group, it's going to tell them what they did wrong, and hopefully they can fix it. So let's fix it. i put that 12 back in there. A complete turn. And it looks at all the groups again and says, okay, that group's correct. And it updated the little tab there saying that's that's a correct group. And AI, there was a little glitch there where it played in my incorrect group. That was not correct. I'll go ahead and take his 13. That's also something I've got to tweak. But that's what's fun. I mean, when I just recently wired this up so I can play against the computer, and it's great because now I'm, I'm finding all these issues. Uh, now I can play test it, and I can start identifying and uh, squashing all the bugs. And there were a fair amount, but now there's only just one. There's one bug that crops up at least once per game where, like, uh, it, the, the computer will play duplicate tile. It'll play, like, a duplicate five three times, and, I, I you know, I got to iron that out. No problem there. So let's look at what to do next. Can't do anything. I'm gonna go ahead and oh, computer's got another group to play. Five, six, seven. Oh. Just gonna organize these a little better. I just want to keep playing a little bit so you can see um, when the computer, you know, what it can fully do. It can add to different groups. <clears throat> see if we get that opportunity. I am not seeing, maybe you're seeing it, but I am not. Maybe these ones, no. I'm just not really seeing a turn that I can make right now. The only thing I could do is if I could swap out that three with another three, and if I had a six, I could steal that six. It gets complex, you'll see. So this game, you know, it can get tricky. Uh, it's mildly complex, I would say. 
But boy, when you're trying to go out of the game, win the game, you're trying to get rid of your last two tiles, and there's a ton of groups on the board, it can get really tricky trying to finagle your way <laughs> and making a final group or meld, if you will. Okay, I can't do anything right now. I didn't do it, so I'm going to complete my turn. At this point, now it's just adding extra tiles to my rack. In the future, I'll just have to expand this rack somehow. Right now, I'm just having extra tiles added to the bottom. And I'll just keep adding them until I play them. Wow. A lot of ones being generated. I guess I, I didn't see this before, but I can go ahead and play this. Whoop-de-doo. I'll put these back in my rack. So every time I draw a tile, the code iterates through this object and it finds the first empty slot, it puts the tile there. If it doesn't find an empty slot, then it puts the tile at the, uh, it just appends the tile to the rack, which ends up the tile being down here. Anyways, a little, that was a little technical. Computer's got nothing to play. Not really helping me out here. That's another thing I'm gonna go ahead and develop in the future is adding another computer, one or two computer opponents. Okay, computer's got a group here. Nice. Does that help me out? Not really. I got three twos. Go ahead and play three of a kind. Put those over there, or those other ones that are three of a kind. Complete my turn. Computer's got nothing. play 11, 12, and 13. That works. Complete my turn. Computer. All right, now the computer just appended to two different groups. So basically prepended the 9 and the 10 here. This 9 and this 10. And then it added this 2 to the front. That's what I wanted you guys to see. Um, <clears throat> so that's about the gist of what that computer can do right now. Um, what I want the computer to do is to be more sophisticated, and um, which requires me to write uh, an algorithm that basically allows the computer to steal from other groups to make a new group with one or more tiles from its tile list or tile rack. So. Let's see if I can do that now, based on what's on the board. Nine. Nine. So basically, this is something like I'm talking about. So let's say the computer had this eight right here. It would put that down, and it would have already iterated through all these groups on the board, and it would say, oh, I see, I can match that eight with this nine and this 10. Boom! I've made a new group. There you go. And that's a valid move. All these groups are completely fluid. So at this point in development I have just now written that script. Previously I was on a sprint where I wrote the script for it to you know iterate, understand these groups, find matches and then play them on the board. Now I'm at the point where like I just showed you I need to the computer to steal from different groups to make a, a, a new group. So I'll just put a little tile, I just put a little graphic together to show you. Um, and it sort of helped me too. Actually, when putting it together, I realized I had a kind of a, I was missing um, a condition in my logic to um, <clears throat> look for certain targets. So, 
go full screen here. So this is basically, I'll show you where we are right now with the code and, and what it can do. And it can basically say if the computer has, say, um, two consecutive tiles, like it has this one and this two here, it can look through and it can say, I just need a three. I basically, all I need to do is find a three and I can make a group. A three or four or anything greater, three or greater, it's great. So it finds that it can take this three right here off the end and then it's good. It, it make a valid group of one, two, three. And the same with finding, uh, if it had a five and a six, it can find a, a match on the other end of a group. So um, understanding what side of the group it's pulling from ties back to the code and, and basically looking at certain index positions and seeing if those are valid. If, if it's in index position zero or it's uh, in index position, the last position or the length minus one, um, that's a valid tile to take. Okay, uh, furthermore, it can look and say, well, I only have one tile, but I see that this group has two tiles that I could use to make my final group. And um, that's what the algorithm I'm writing right now can do. Right now, I can't do that on the board, but the algorithm I'm writing can do it in the code. It just can't do it visually. So it can basically find this one and two on the board and say, I can combine with that to make a one, two, three, and I'm good. Conversely, it can take two consecutives off the end. If it had a four, it can just get that five and six, call it a day, and this is still one, two, three, four. We have two new groups. So on to um, also something interesting it can do, if it had one tile, say it had this two right here, it can go through and it can say, basically show me all of the square groups on this board right now. Okay, let me look through those and I'm looking for a target. My targets right now, if I have a two, I basically need to find the uh, two adjacent tiles to a one and a three. So it basically iterates through this group. It sees this one here. It says, is that in a valid index position? Uh, if so, yes. Go ahead and take it. Does it leave three tiles behind? Yes, it does. Okay, it's mine. I'm going to take it keeps going, it looks at this group, this is another group, separate group, I see that three, three's in the first position, it's gonna leave three behind, take it, boom. I have three tiles, that's, that's a valid group to make. So, now on to something even trickier, um, is where you would find, like let's say we have this four here, it's basically gonna say, it's gone through all of these checks, it's gone through so many checks at this point, It's said, can I make my own melds? Can I add to other groups? Can I find any of these targets in any of these positions on any of the other groups? No, I haven't. Well, now I'm down to here, and I found this giant consecutive group of like one through eight, and I have this four, so, and I see in the targets that it's gonna be looking for is a three and a five to make a group of three. And so it sees this three right here and it goes, oh, you're not in index position zero or one, you're in index position two. I haven't looked at that before. Plus you're in a group that's six or more. I haven't looked at those either. Is there something different I can do with this group? And it says, okay, yeah, take this one through three, great. Um, and add it to your four and call it a day and basically leave this four, five, six uh, as a valid group, leave that one behind as long as it's three or greater, fine. So in this check, we're looking, and I can tell that I have this wrong here, but we're basically looking at, at this point of groups that are six or more, and uh, we're looking for targets in index positions two, and it's 10. Um, down here I have it as 11, and. That's not correct. We've already looked at 11 and 12. So we're looking at the third to last place and we're looking at the third position. <clears throat> so in this example in yellow here, we have one through 13. We're basically looking for uh, targets between, any targets that we have in this group that are between three and 11 in this example. Um, so that's where I am. I wanted to kind of I wanted to live demo kind of how I was going to solve this in the code and it basically took me three hours I think to complete it and that would have been so boring so but basically I'm just going to take you over at the moment and just kind of show you some of the code and 
let's go ahead and cross over over to Microsoft VS Code make this full screen um, can kind of show you my project here and here I have so many scripts and um, let's go ahead and open let's open this one this is the HTML file it's super basic there's nothing in here um, except for my info bars, but everything else is dynamically um, generated inside this HTML as you play the game. So the base template has nothing really in it. Um, but here are just, these are the one, two, three, four scripts that are running this whole game. I have uh, evaluate play groups. So it's just looking at all the groups on the board and um, gathering them into, a, uh, into a, an object, which is a, essentially like a dictionary of key value pairs. And then um, I have one here that makes tile graphics. It will just generate the graphic on the board um, from code. There's no like I don't have any saved images that are gen generating the tiles. They're all be gen they're generating with code. Um, and then I have kind of um, this this script here that's making the decisions about all of what moves it's going to make based on what's on the board. So that's the AI moves decider, and then. The Rummy Brain is basically the main script that kind of, it's the router, it sort of controls, you know, all the other scripts you will sort of tie into this. So the new script that I'm writing right now is like I have this, it's called uh, Test Loose Tile Finder, and it's gone through all those other scripts. It's, like I said before, it's, it's look, can I make a meld? Um, can I make my own groups of three from my tiles? Can I add to other groups on the board? Well, this is basically that, that function that's going to steal from other groups on the board. So let me make this. Okay. So right now I'm, I'm just testing. Uh, this isn't running in the in the game right now. It's off to the side. And I've created this test library. And essentially this is what it, the, the structure looks right now when the algorithm pulls the game groups together from the board. Let me go back over there. So it's basically going through all these sets, and it's going to, you know, put this five, six, seven in the circle uh, key, or part of the circle library, and then it's going to put this two, three, four, and you would see that appear over here um, where it says circle. It would dump uh, those tiles in an array over here, and it would list them out one, two, three, four, whatever they are. It would give me the uh, the ID of the the div or the HTML HTML object they're in. It would tell me what type of group <clears throat> is it a straight, is it a three of a kind, and it would also tell me how that group is sorted. Um, I'm not sure if I'm really going to need these, but I just ha I just put this in here in case when I was developing, in case I'd need it in the future. I can always delete it and omit it later. So basically, this is um, a test object. It's a library of all the objects on the in the game, play, playable on the game board. And here I've generated, um, right here I've generated a list of the remaining tiles in the computer's list that still need to find homes that can be played. So I'm gonna deactivate that and I'm just gonna do one simple one. I'm gonna do a circle five one and basically it's going to look, it's going to iterate through this object, it's going to find circle, it's going to look through each array, and it's going to look for targets. And then it's going to generate mathematical, you know, numerical targets going to be looking for four, and it's going to be looking for six. So it's going to go through this object, it's going to see this four, and then it's going to see this six, and it's going to grab each one. It's going to say, oh, I'll grab that four because this array is greater than three. And I know that's, I'm taking one, that's gonna leave three behind. I'm not gonna ruin this group by doing so. I'm not gonna destroy or mutate it. I'm not gonna make it invalid. So it's gonna take that four and that six and it's gonna basically uh, save that, aggregate it and save it to be playable on the board. So let's run that with node. So I'm in node, I'm in terminal. Let's see, I don't know why, okay. Why it, okay, there we go. So I'm in the project now. I'm gonna say node, go ahead and run this file. I'm gonna save it. Oops, 
save it real quick. Okay, so I basically set this up with an intended output. I wanted it, so this is the final list. These are the tiles that are gonna be played on the board. Circle four, circle five, circle six. Right here is the tile that I originally started with that was in the computer's rack. And these are the locations on the board right now of where these tiles are. I know it's in div container eight, I know it's tile ID this, the container 11, tile ID 6, and um, I know that this is a hybrid group because it's stealing from other groups to make a single group, and the, append, the tile method right now is append. When they come on the board, they're going to be appended one after another. <clears throat> and so how it does that, sort of how I told you before, is it it basically creates an array. It says, this is the tile we have in our rack. This is the suit. Go ahead and look in that suit in the future. But before you do that, generate in that same array, this array right here, a list of numeric targets that we're going to be looking for. OK, and then once it has that, then it goes through the code and does its magic. It says, I'm gonna look at this right here. I'm gonna to go to this place in the dictionary. I'm gonna look through its arrays and I'm gonna look for this target. And if I find that target, I'm gonna grab it. If I find that target and it meets all the conditions, I'm gonna grab it. And, um, and I'll just go ahead and show you. So that was one simple example. And I'm gonna go ahead and just show you a really uh, large example. So as I went through this piece by piece, I just, you know, this script is now something like, I don't know, maybe 500 lines. Originally it started, I, I had everything working off one tile and the script was probably like 200 lines long, but <clears throat> little by little I've been adding to it, iterating and just uh, developing and making it more versatile. So here we go, I'm going to go ahead and make it look for... So in this case, it's going to do everything that I was showing you before in this graphic. You know, it's stealing the two, it's stealing one from each group. We just went through that, and then this is the latest thing that I've developed. Excuse me, I got the code working for. It. And so, in this case, we're going to be. We have only. I made this purposely made this triangle dictionary uh, 1 through 13 to test it and see how far I can get and we have a consecutive four, triangle 4 and 5 and it's going to look at this group and it's be like okay my targets are probably 3 and 6 all I need is one more tile to complete my meld okay I found a 3 right here 3 is now in index position 0, 1, 2 it's in the um, zero, one. it's in the second index position it's confusing and if I take that, what will be left behind is enough tiles to still have a valid group. I basically just need these three tiles um, combined with my X here, and I'm good to go. And the code sort of, I think, looks at um, where to split this group. You know, because it can also take um, six and seven. It actually could just take that six. The code isn't versatile enough to just steal this six out of the group. I basically don't want to um, create three groups at the moment. I want to create two groups because if I stole this six, then I would have not only to recreate this group on the board, I'd have to split it and then create this group and then meld this six together with the, the group I'm trying to make. So that'd be three groups. So right now I'm being lazy. And what I'm doing is saying, well, you could split it this way or you could split it that way. You can slice and dice all day long, but let's just go ahead and take the side of the current group that's less tiles. So it compares, you know, the, I would be stealing three here and on the side I'd be stealing, I don't know, six through 13. Uh, it's obviously less tiles to take here, so it should be taking uh, one through three. And conversely, it will come back to that group, and it will find uh, 
it'll find this 10 in here and it'll say when well, my targets are 9, 8 and a 9 and it's 11 and a 12 and I forget what it's going to take but I think it's going to take this side because basically after that after the first iteration this list will then look like this um, it'll be much shorter get it over here Hello. Um, it's going to go ahead and I, I think it's going to take it's going to take this side of things and it's going to leave all these guys behind to play another day so let's fix what I just did and let's go ahead and run this thing and th th something I didn't explain before is every time that it goes through the code and it finds a match and it steals from a group and makes a new meld it goes through and it deletes what it stole from this list uh, and then it goes through it again so the list is fresh it's not going to steal the same tile from uh, two different times and put it in two different melds you know we will if we didn't do that we'd have a lot of errors so every time I go through and take I update this list so it's a clean list each time and, and we're doing a new pick um, from a fresh list so let's go ahead and run this um, let's create a couple lines here so we know where we are and the terminal down here below or say node no go ahead and run this running it it's pretty quick so this is our final object. It's nice and organized. Um, I think I can see we have one, two, three, four, five different groups that we can now make based on this search, based on this new algorithm. And um, I'll go ahead and take you through it real quick. Uh, so originally it had this 5 and this 6, and basically it found this 4. And so it looked at this square, and it saw, um, found a square 4, 2 somewhere. Oh wait, hold on, no. Oh, sorry. These are circles. These are not squares. God, so you look at code long enough and it just all starts looking the same. All right, now I can read again. So, <laughs> it started with a circle uh, five and six, and it's just looking for this four, and it found this four hanging out here and took it. Great. We have this diamond uh, ten. We're looking at the diamond group, uh, it basically took these three over here. It could have taken those three, or it could have taken um, these two. I'm not sure why it didn't take these two earlier. I think it's because this group is larger. Um, and I think I'm avoiding groups like that. I, I need to look back at the code because it probably should have just taken these two off the end and called it a day. Anyways, the, the new algorithm took it and it took quite a lot and it took uh, the 7, 8, 9 and it left this 10, 11, 12, fine. And I basically know uh, where their homes are and every time I take it I store what I took it and what group I took it from so I can go back later find that group and delete those tiles from the list to create a fresh list for the next go around uh, the next deal is a square now we're looking at squares I have a square six one um, <clears throat> I need a five and a seven it found this five and it found this seven took them great now we're in that triangle I was talking about earlier and had that uh, see if it panned out the way I said we had four and a five should have found that target of three and these are all the tiles that it took uh, it basically took these three tiles the one two and three and this is our final set one through five and then it came through again it said oh yeah you had that triangle ten one I'm gonna look at that same group what am I gonna take uh, I'm not gonna take that ten that ten one because I already have it it should take these ones right here and we can just test that real quick and I'll say this is a 10-2 make sure it didn't take it and the final group it's not what it did take is this 11-12-13 so at this point the next thing to do is to twig the code or integrate it into the existing code or write new code to display and put these tiles on the board and make them playable and I think it's sort of the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to iterate through this, these groups and I'm going to say 
uh, find these IDs for every ID in this group here that's not in here you're gonna have to generate that graphic and put it in a group for every ID in here uh, detach it from its current group and append it to it, the new group we've just made. Um, so I've been talking a bunch. Sort of want to show you some of the code that I wrote. Uh, you can hang around if you want or check out. It's going to get kind of boring, but I wrote basically a custom sorting function. It's a bubble sort. Um, and it does, first it sorts things, I believe, numerically, and then it does an alpha sort. Or do we do alpha and then numeric? Uh, it should call numeric, finish it, and then do alpha, and then finish it. And our final sort should be this. Um, pretty simple, just a for loop. Just comparing the current element to the element in front of it, and just changing positions as it goes, depending on what elements, uh, the larger of the two. Um, Pretty standard bubble sort function. Um, this is a function that basically looks at the, our array list. So it looks at our target, these tiles, and it makes, um, let's see how far back this goes. God, it did a lot of work. So basically, uh, looks at our list of tiles and it generates this three through eight of numeric targets we're gonna look for. And that's sort of what this function does right here. <clears throat> it's just generating a three through eight. And I just gotta send it a couple parameters and it will do its business. Simple for loop, uh, another for loop to kind of comprehend you know, the tile that I'm currently looking at and um, what suit it is. It's a circle suit. Uh, it's a circle, uh, this one was, it was circle five and six, and it's gonna generate the numeric, based off those conditions, gonna de de determine if it's, uh, if it's consecutive or not, I believe, and then it's gonna generate the correct numeric targets that we're gonna be looking for. Uh, it's gonna put them in an array it's going to be a, a list of lists, and then later we're going to go through that list of lists, and we're going to start filling out this object, which is going to turn into our final object if it passes all the tests. So it's going to look like, you know, it's going to tell us the group type, hybrid, hybrid, append, append. It's going to give us the AI tiles, the tiles in our rack. Uh, that we need to get rid of. And then it's going to put all the tile IDs that we're going to be playing as a full group right there. And it's going to tell me all the homes and the IDs of the tiles I'm going to be stealing that are not in my rack. And so that's what this next um, bit of code is going to do. It's a bit lengthy. It's a, a nested for loop. And it's going to look at that object. It's going to generate uh, two possible tile IDs to look for targets. It's going to say, say we're looking for a triangle uh, one one. It's going to also going to create a triangle one two because there's two copies of every tile. That's how this game is. There's two of everything. <clears throat> so we want to look for either possible match. We're going to go through our game board list that I showed you up above. We're going to look at the current suit. We're going to go through that. We're going to iterate through. We're going to look at you know sets of three or more. Yeah, if it's greater than three, we're going to look at it. Um, and we're going to look at it even further if it includes some of the targets we're looking for. And then we're going to go in there and we're going to make sure that uh, we're going to double check that the tiles we're looking for is greater than one. And then we're going to go through our, um, <clears throat> our two tile ID possibilities and see if they're in here. Um, and then we're going to start looking at the game board. We're going to start looking, say, at the circles. And we're going to say, well, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, if the length is so forth and so forth. Um, and, you, and you have our two tiles. And the index positions of those tiles are in these locations. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take those tiles. We're going to, 
We're going to go ahead and take them. Uh, here's the ID. We're going to push them to our group and so forth. We go on. There's other checks. Um, so this check is I have one tile and I'm looking for two in a group. I'm not going to bore you with all the details and all the code. Uh, it's a lot of looking through indexes and looking through the key, the key and then looking through the value. Um, and this is the last bit of code that I just finished that took three hours and, you know, I don't know, maybe it's a hundred lines. Um, but it's basically looking for those nested tiles and extracting them. Um, you know, if it's in, um, yeah, that's not going to make sense to you, but it does. Uh, you know, we're gonna, the, the group has to be six or more. We haven't found the match yet. Um, yeah, I forget what tile like what the tile is at this point. It's just our iterating object uh, that we're searching for. Okay, so it just goes through all this business. Um, I've spent some time looking for this, but that's why I make all these <laughs> notes so I can rem remember what I did. Um, I think in this in this scenario, I found a match, and I'm going to go ahead and, and iterate through and grab all of the previous uh, tiles before it. And we're going to go ahead and push those. Oh, this is why I, I have consecutive tiles. Um, treat that differently. I could have sworn I was comparing the groups. It's almost like I should have done this uh, video right after I made this. It's so fresh in my mind. <coughs> Anyways, um, after that, um, this is the function where it goes through and makes sure that it puts the tiles in order, double checks they're consecutive, that I didn't grab things from, you know, I grabbed enough things from enough groups to make a final meld, uh, and then it goes through and it does a custom delete job, and it goes through and four loops through my object, finds it um, in the suit, and it goes ahead and it deletes using filter. It basically says return me a new array <coughs> in that suit that's not one of our tile IDs. And that's that. So the next thing I, I got to do is go through and integrate this into the game so that you actually play it. <coughs>